Lesson 73, Solving Compound Inequalities. A compound inequality is two inequalities combined with the word and, which makes it a conjunction, or, or, which makes it a disjunction. That is important information to you. Okay. For example, <clears throat> x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 5 can be written as, what they've done here is they've taken this and they've switched everything around on this part. So the x came to this side, the sign flipped, and the negative 3 came over here. So that's where each of those things came from, and then this one was just stacked right as it is with it. So the x came here, less than or equal to 5, and the graph of this intersection, I'm going to start with what's on the left. So on the left I have a negative 3. So I'm going to put my point at negative 3. I see it has the equal sign, so I'm going to close it up. Then I have a 5. And it also has the equal sign, so I'm going to close it up. Now with this one, I have to refer back to this original one because whenever I graph I always think about it with the variable on the left side of the inequality which means it would be shaded to the right this one would be shaded to the left which means that it's shaded between okay if you have and for your um, com compound inequality then that means that they should ha have two points and the line should go between them the shaded region okay so Negative 3 and 5 are part of the solution set, and everything between those two numbers are part of the solution set for that compound inequality, which was a conjunction. It said and. <clears throat> it says write and graph a compound inequality to represent the statement. All real numbers that are greater than negative 1 and less than 5. So I'm going to write this one first. All real numbers, I'm going to represent that with x, are greater than negative 1. The other one is that all real numbers are less than 5. So if I flip this one around the other way, I'm going to switch everything around. So it's going to be negative 1. Switch the sign around. Put my x. Then this x is the same x. So then I have my less than 5. Then I just have to graph it. So when I graph it, I see I have a point at negative 1. It does not have the equal sign, so I'm going to leave it open. Okay, there's no equal to. And then 5 also doesn't have the equal sign, so it's going to be open. And it said and, so it should be between. Okay, we can check that by looking at the originals. This one says shade to the right. This one says shade to the left. That would work. So to the right of negative 1, to the left of 5. <clears throat> wind speeds ranging from 96 to 110 miles per hour okay so the wind could be this speed to this speed so at the at the least it's going to be this speed so that means I'm going to have 96 is ranging from this speed it could be this speed okay so that means that it has to be this way okay and then my 110 okay my 96, my wind speed had to be greater than or equal to 96 because the other numbers that I'm talking about are larger, okay? And for the 110, it had to be less than or equal to 110 because the numbers that I'm talking about are smaller. So a minimum speed of 96, a maximum speed of 110. So that looks like this. This graph, obviously, the numbers don't work for it, so I'm just going to sketch a new one. Okay. And... I'm going to say 90, 95, 100, 105, 110. Okay, so when I graph this one, I'm going to start at 96, which is going to be about here. Okay, and my point is going to be closed because it has the equal to, and it wants me to shade to the right. I'm going that direction. This one started at 110. It also has the equal to, so I'm going to close it in. And it says to shade to the left, so it's going this way, which means that they're going to be together. It is a conjunction, and that's my final answer. <clears throat>
It says a local moving company charges $60 an hour plus a $50 gasoline fee. They have a minimum charge of $140. Not more than $500 can be spent. Write and solve a conjunction that can be used to find the number of hours that will keep the bill within those limits. Okay? So it has to be somewhere between 140 because that's the minimum. Okay? So that means that's going to be my first number, 140. And that number has to be um, less than or equal to what they're spending, which is $60 an hour. I shouldn't have put X yet. Let me, we'll just start that over again. Sorry. 140 has to be less than or equal to what they charge, which is $60 an hour plus a $50 gasoline fee. So I'm going to put 60X, because it's for every hour, plus $50 in gas. And then it says not more than 500 can be spent. So this amount has to be less than or equal to the total being spent, which is $500. So it says write and solve. We wrote one. Now we have to solve it. Okay? So whenever we do this, <clears throat> we have to get x by itself in the middle. So we're going to solve this the same way as if it were an equation or a regular multi-step inequality. I'm going to start by subtracting 50. Now we always say what we do to one side, we must do to the other. That applies to both inequalities here. So I have to subtract 50 over here, and I have to subtract 50 over here. So when I subtract here, I get a 90 less than or equal to 60x, which is less than or equal to 450. <clears throat> x is still not by itself, so to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 60 on both sides, and by both sides I mean every side, so I have to divide by 60 here, divide by 60 here, so 60's will cancel. I have x and I bring my sign straight down. I didn't divide or multiply by a negative so they don't change at all. Um, my zeros can cancel. 6 goes into 9 1.5 times and I canceled these. 6 goes into 45 7.5 times. So this is the hour range. They can get the moving company for as much as 1.5 hours to 7.5 hours. The minimum time is 1.5 and the maximum time is 7.5 hours. And that is my final answer. A disjunction uses the word OR. We write two separate inequalities and a solution is a number that makes either inequality true. Okay? So, <clears throat> it says write and graph a compound inequality to represent the statement. All real numbers greater than 2 or less than negative 1. So all real numbers greater than 2, we re remember we showed this by writing two separate ones earlier. So the one that's greater than 2, I'm going to say x is greater than, whoops, not equal to, just x is greater than 2, and, or the other one is that x is less than negative 1. So now, I need to flip this one around so I can write it as one conjunction. So I'm going to have two, flip my sign around, x. This x would be right here. My sign comes down, minus one. So now, whenever I do this, I'm going to start with two, put a point there. It's going to be open because there's no equal to. This one says I need to shade to the right, so I'm shading this direction. And this one, I have to start at negative one. There is um, no equal sign, so it is also open, and this one says to shade to the left. So my graph of a disjunction looks like this. Okay, they're going opposite directions instead of coming together. <clears throat> it says all real numbers no more than three. Now, all real numbers no more than three. That means that this number can be equal to three but it can't be bigger, so it has to be less than or equal to 3. And, this one says and, um, all real numbers no less than 8. So I'm going to put 8, no less. It could be equal to 8, or it could be greater than 8, but it cannot be less. So I'm going to rewrite this, um, this one, so that I have my x in the middle of my conjunction. So I have 3. I'm going to flip my sign around to be greater than or equal to because my x is going to the other side. And then this sign comes straight down. 
my 8. So whenever I graph this one, I'm looking at 3 first. And it's going to be closed because it has the equal to. At 8, also, I'm going to be closed because it has the equal to. This one says to shade to the left. And this one says to shade to the right. So to the left is this way. And to the right is this way. So on this problem, the way that they wrote it said and, but whenever we have our graph, we can see that it is a disjunction, so we would have said or between these two things, because it's a disjunction. They're going opposite directions. And remember that anything on these shaded lines would be a solution to the system, okay? All real numbers, no more than three, and no less than eight. So all real numbers... We're calling that x. No more than 3. Whoops, I think I just did that one. Example 4 says solve the disjunction. x is x plus 6 is less than 7, or negative um, 3x is less than negative 9. So before I put these together as one disjunction, I'm going to solve them. So this one, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I have that x is less than 1. And on this one, I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides, which remember, anything I'm, anytime I multiply or divide by a negative, my sign has to flip. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. So this one was the first one, so I'm going to write it as 1, flip my sign around, x, and then my sign here comes straight down and I have 3 so I'm going to graph this I have, we'll just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 okay my first point is at 1 my second point is at 3 and if I look at my originals this one says to shade to the left this one says to shade to the right, which is opposite directions, which is what it should be because this was a disjunction. It shouldn't come together. Final example here says write a compound inequality that describes each graph. So what you should do is you should write um, an inequality for this piece and this piece and then write it together. You can see that this one is going to be a disjunction because they're going opposite directions. This piece, I would say that x is less than because it's pointing to the left or equal to because it's shaded. This point is 1. This one, I would say that x is greater than because it shades to the right, not equal to because it's open and my point there is 7. When I write it together as a compound inequality, Okay, this one is the one I would switch around, so it would be 1, my sign's going to flip, so I have greater than or equal to x, this sign comes straight down, and then I have my 7. And then I want you to try b on your own paper, and that's all I have for you. So I hope that you've taken good notes, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.